live from Washington, D.C. Jay Sekulow Live. Phone lines are open for your questions right now. And now, Chief Counsel for the American Center for Law and Justice, Jay Sekulow. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the broadcast. Here is the summary of a report that was just issued by the United Nations and that is now being responded to by the United States. And I will say finally, and I am glad to say this, the administration is responding in a very strong manner. But this is a conclusion of the United Nations ECOSOC, that is the Economic and Society uh, Division of the United Nations. It's their um, ECOSOC also covers Western Asia, so that would be the Middle East is how they view that. This is a report written by an UN committee. I'll give you the name of the individuals, Richard Falk. I'll give you more about him in a moment. But let me give you the concluding term. This is how it concludes. And this is dramatic, folks, because this is very, very serious. After determining that Israel is guilty of apartheid, quote, states have a collective duty, A, not to recognize an apartheid regime as lawful, B, not to aid or assist a state in maintaining an apartheid regime, and C, ready for this, and to cooperate with the United Nations and other states in bringing the apartheid regime to an end. The regime they're talking about is the Jewish, democratically elected state of Israel, recognized, by the way, by the United Nations. This is a UN report, which the Secretary General has said doesn't represent his views, which I'm glad to hear hear him say that, but this is a report that's been issued. Now, it's getting a lot of flack. In fact, if you go to the website to try to get it right now, you'd have a little trouble finding it. But one of our lawyers, Joseph Williams, went and found it, and we've got the full report. There's been a reaction by Nikki Haley. It has been strong. You heard that in the beginning. This is one of a series of attacks on Israel, and I will go through it with you in a moment, but this is how the report starts. The report concludes that Israel has established an apartheid regime that dominates the Palestinian people as a whole. Folks, this is a fraud. This is an absolute fraud. And the guy that wrote it under the UN auspices is a 9-11 denier, truth denier. He also blames the United States for the Boston Marathon bombings. And the UN gave this guy money to write this report. But this goes in a string of reports we've seen. I'll get Jordan and fans comment quickly here. Yeah, that's right. I look at this, we've been talking about that executive order, and four of the countries that are on the executive order on the travel ban that's been up, uh, been stopped by two different courts now and is being now will be on appeal to circuit courts. Four of those countries are part of this commission inside uh, ECOSOC. Uh, Libya, uh, of course, uh, Sudan, Syria, and Yemen. These are four of the six countries that Donald Trump has said and the U.S. government has said and the Obama administration have said we yep. cannot trust in vetting for their people that seek immigration from there. This report finds that the strategic fragmentation of the Palestinian people is the principal method by which Israel imposes apartheid. It's, it's fragmented because Israel voluntarily pulled out of Gaza so the Palestinian Authority could take control, except guess what happened? Hamas came in. Shocking, right? I'll tell you who's the regime that's the apartheid regime, the United Nations. We've got a lot more ahead, including commentary and an analysis on this incredible negative report coming out of the United Nations. Should we be surprised? No, but it's calling for Israel's destruction, the elimination of the Jewish state. We've got a petition up at ACLJ.org. I'm going to encourage you to sign it. Stand with Israel. I will bless those that bless thee, curse those that curse thee. That's not my words. That's the words of God. We'll take your calls when we come back from the break. But again, stand with us. Stand with Israel. ACLJ.org or 1-877-989-2255 to sign that petition. 877-989-2255 or ACLJ.org. Israel is under constant deadly terrorist knife and rocket attacks. Jewish students, professors, and Christians who support Israel face vicious discrimination at U.S. universities, all in an attempt to delegitimize the state of Israel. Israel is our ally, the Jewish people our friends. It's our duty to defend them. 
That's why the ACLJ is launching a massive new multinational legal campaign in defense of Israel, in the U.S., at the U.N., and with world leaders. But we need these global leaders to hear from you now. Add your name to our new petition, a petition to defend Israel from anti-Israel attacks across the globe. Call now, 1-877-989-2255. That's 1-877-989-2255. That's 1-877-989-2255. Or you can add your name online, aclj.org. All right, this is goes one step beyond what's called the BDS movement, Boycott, Divest, and Sanction. And this is a UN report. By the way, it comes out of what's called ECOSOC. ECOSOC is one of the main committees of the UN. By the way, also, our European Center for Law and Justice has NGO status. That is a recognized non-governmental organization with the ECOSOC division of the UN. So we're going to be filing a legal response to this. Uh, our special counsel, Mark Goldfeder, who's also a professor of law at Emory University, is preparing a response right now uh, that will also go up on ACLJ.org. But I start with the – Joseph Williams pointed this out to me, and he's right. You go to the end of the report, and you see what, they, what the goal is here. We talk about this boycott, divest, and sanction. This goes way beyond that. That's to delegitimize Israel. This report is to eliminate Israel as a Jewish state. Let, let me be very clear about this. It's to eliminate – Israel as a Jewish state. Now, we have offices in Jerusalem. I am doing a lot of work in Jerusalem. We all do. I am holding in my hand a pen that I received from the Ministry of Foreign Affairs from Israel when I spoke at an event that they sponsored as a lecturer on how to defend Israel globally. I was one of the primary professors on that. So I'm using that pen today as a, to make a point. But I want to go through the three things they asked for. Logan, get some comments ready. Jordan, right. I want you to respond, and Than as well, on how we're going to handle this at the UN. But let's go through each, each one. This is what the report concludes. States have a collective duty not to recognize an apartheid regime as, off, as lawful. So that's number one. Don't recognize an apartheid regime. Now, I think a lot of us would say, yes, under international law, that's absolutely and fundamentally correct don't recognize an apartheid regime. So but understand that's the predicate of, to what they're about to do. But let's discuss that one first. Okay. That's normal under international law. Yeah. Don't recognize an apartheid regime. Except for there's really only been one identified, and that was yeah. South Africa. Right. Uh, the world came together it, with sanctioning South Africa and their very uh, the way they treated uh, the uh, native people of uh, the area. You know, they were, again, a mixture of Dutch and English, British uh, immigrants. Uh, who had taken over and created uh, this white-controlled country, which was predominantly uh, black. And it was a horrible system, and it existed until uh, the late 80s, early 90s, Nelson Mandela. Right. That's where the term, it was actually a term created by the the leaders in South Africa, the white leaders, uh, the apartheid term of how we, will, how we will govern. They created that. It wasn't a negative term at first. So that's the only real example in history of of the apartheid so uh, gov uh, an but apartheid comparing government. Israel to th so oh, that's sure, why I wanted yeah. to get the legal definition here. So comparing Israel to South Africa is a dramatic statement to say the least, and very much in the mode of destabilizing Israel's right to exist. Yeah, I mean, South Africa was cut off from the world. It was literally cut off from the world for decades, actually, until they could no longer survive being okay. cut off from the world. Number two, uh, fan is. The other thing they say under the law is not to aid or assist a state in maintaining an apartheid regime. So what they're calling off there is, again, not only isolating Israel, but no funding, no business. That's the BDS section of this, the boycott, divest, and sanction. Your comments on that. You're our UN representative. You've been up there a lot. What's your sense of this? Well, the truth is, Jay, they're echoing a policy position that many in the United Nations, including the Organization for the Islamic Cooperation and, by the way, the Palestinian government, including Hamas, have put forward for a long time. The difference here, Jay, is that over the last eight years, the main defender of, of Israel on those attacks, which has always been the United States, that went away, especially last year, yeah. as our listeners are very well aware of. So at the United Nations, the key here is the posture of the United States, and that has gone away over the last eight years. Fortunately, it's coming back. Yeah, but it allowed this report to can blame, thank President Obama for this nonsense, by the way. Let me give you the next one. And this is what they conclude what you do when you have these two predicates of an apartheid state. You stop cooperating 
The United Nations should stop cooperating. Other states, and they should cooperate together, though. So you don't cooperate with the apartheid state. No aid to Israel, under their view. No assistance, no recognition. But then, to cooperate with the United Nations and other states in bringing apartheid regimes to an end. Understand what this is saying. Bring the Jewish state of Israel to an end. Now, this is by a nutcase, okay, that the United Nations has allowed to go forward. His name is Richard Falk. Taxpayer dollars are being used to fund these commissions. He, by the way, is also a professor emeritus of international law at Princeton University. Princeton should be embarrassed. This guy, we've done research. That's what we do here at the ACs. And I want to do a documentary on this whole thing, by the way. I am, as you can tell, not too happy about this. I, I am glad that the United States is responding, but I am outraged. In 2000, 9-11, boast, uh, the Boston bombing, uh, he called it, that was because of a Palestinian holocaust. That's what he calls all these things. What well, it's happening to you in the United States because of a Palestinian holocaust. Uh, in 2011, Falk, uh, Falk, that's Richard Falk, this is the guy that wrote this report for the UN, uh, wrote in a blog post that there was an apparent cover-up over the 9-11 terror attacks and said mainstream media were unwilling to acknowledge the well-evidenced doubts about the official version of the events. Then U.S. Ambassador to the U.N., uh, uh, Susan Rice, in response called, the, to the, uh, called on the U.N. to remove Falk from his position, which would have been nice. Of course, they didn't do it. Rice again called for his removal. This is even under Obama. They're trying to get rid of this guy. Then U.N. Secretary General Ban Ki-moon was critical but said he could not dismiss Falk since special rapporteurs are appointed by the Human Rights Council and not the Secretariat. And, of course, Jordan, the Human Rights Council, is controlled by the Organization of the Islamic Cooperation. Which is why uh, President Trump and part of their their idea is to stop funding the UN Human Rights Council and just give up our seat there. The U.S. has a seat there. Just give up on it. Cut the funding. Uh, Again, uh, there's been a lot of discussion in the last few days about cutting hundreds of millions of dollars of funding to the United Nations to make the U.N., Feel the pain. Now, I have to be clear here. The Secretary General of the UN, who's a new Secretary General, it's not Ban Ki Moon anymore, it's uh, right. Guterres. He uh, uh, was a leader from Portugal. Um, he has said he disagrees with this statement. Now, the UN has not made an official statement saying it disagrees, but the Security Secretary, uh, Secretary General saying that is clear. The fact that the full report has been removed from the UN website, but this is not over until that executive summary, which includes the language calling Israel an apartheid state. That must be removed is what Nikki Haley is calling for, our U.S. ambassador to the yep. U.N. That also has to come down from any official U.N. website and publication. There's another key aspect of this report that our uh, producer, executive producer uh, points out, Will Haynes. Aware, quote, this is a quote, aware of the seriousness of this allegation, the authors of the report conclude that available evidence establishes beyond a reasonable doubt, that's a legal standard, that Israel is guilty of policies and practices that constitute cr- the crime of of apartheid as legally defined in instruments of international law. Okay? That's what they're saying under the Rome Statute, which is the statute that governs the International Criminal Court in The Hague. Listen to Richard Falk's own comments. I think it is quite appropriate to invoke the legacy of the anti-apartheid campaign at this moment of history in understanding the place which the Palestinian solidarity movement now occupies in the consciousness of the world. These guys are lunatics. I mean, you understand that? These guys are insane. And I say that with no respect to him at all, because this is an individual that's calling for the destruction of the only democracy in the region. And I got to tell you something about some of the countries that sign on to this that I'm not too happy about either. Egypt, you get a lot of money from us, okay? Jordan, you're hanging on by a thread because of the United States of America and Israel. So who are you kidding? All right, you want me to go on? Qatar? Iraq. Really? Iraq? You're signing on to this nonsense? And you're getting our money? Make America great again? I'll, I'll tell you how to start. You, you do this stuff, and we're going to talk about this with Wes Smith. Guess what you don't get? U.S. dollars, period. You want to end this problem real quick? Stop giving these yeah. regimes Money. Maybe we don't prop them up so quickly. What kind of comments were you getting? Yeah, Charlotte asked, Jay, what's even the benefit now for us to be in the UN? Well, it's still a world body that you got to deal with. So, uh, you know, uh, what we need to do security is Council. do, uh, yeah. It, the problem is, yeah, well, the, as George just said, the Security Council is the biggest thing because the Security Council can actually take actions under international law, including engaging militaries. So you yeah. can't just. And we so, have the, that's per- a good we question, have though. The, 
we're a permanent member of that, so we have a veto power over anything. Which is very which important. Means we can veto any kind of conflict. We can also support uh, conflict. We can veto the anti-Israel legislation, which uh, resolutions which the Obama administration failed to do in their final days. But we can do that now. It's why you don't want to give up. You never want to give up no, your no, no. seat but you on the fight. Security Council. And you we can give and up we are representatives. Else. We are. Work- I mean, Than quickly here. We have the ability to engage this directly. We need. Let's let everybody know that we're not just talking about it here. We're going to engage this. Well, as an organization, our affiliate will engage this. The the question will be when it comes to the U.N., you know, whether or not you're going to actually use the leverage points that are available to you. I would say if you're going to use them as the United States, you absolutely should be there. The problem is, Jay, we haven't been using them. That's what's got to change. Yeah, I mean, you know, because when Susan Rice says, well, we called for his resignation and we called for this other guy to step down, but they didn't put anything behind it. Like, guess what you're not going to get from the United States? Money, which is, by the way, 27 percent of your budget. We've got more comments and more questions that we're going to answer, but let me be clear. This is attack, a very clear attack, on the sovereignty of the state of Israel, and we're going to fight back. You can join us in that effort. I'm going to deliver these petitions to the Israeli ambassador to the United Nations. Stand with us as we stand with Israel. You can sign that petition at aclj.org. That's aclj.org, or 1-877-989-2255. So it's 877 877- 989-2255 or aclj.org back with your calls in just a moment Israel is under constant deadly terrorist knife and rocket attacks Jewish students, professors and Christians who support Israel face vicious discrimination at US universities all in an attempt to delegitimize the state of Israel Israel is our ally, the Jewish people our friends. It's our duty to defend them. That's why the ACLJ is launching a massive new multinational legal campaign in defense of Israel, in the U.S., at the U.N., and with world leaders. But we need these global leaders to hear from you now. Add your name to our new petition, a petition to defend Israel from anti-Israel attacks across the globe. Call now, one 877 989-2255. That's 1-877-989-2255. That's 1-877-989-2255. Or you can add your name online, aclj.org. So we've got a report out of the United Nations calling for Israel's uh, not only delegitimizing, but the end of Israel as a Jewish state. This is from ECOSOC. It's it's also their Committee on Western Asia, which includes the Middle East. It's by Richard Falk, who, by the way, was a paid uh, uh, UN rapporteur, which is special status that he had. We have status, too, by the way, and we're using that status because we're going to combat this nonsense. But here's what he said about the Boston Marathon bombings. He linked the Boston Marathon bombings to U.S. policies, citing its support for Israel in particular, that the United States supported Israel. And, that, and that's, a, by the way, that was under President Obama. So if you want to call that support, I, I would say tepid at best. But here's what he said. The American Global Domination Project is bound to generate all kinds of resistance in the post-colonial world. That's what he's saying about the United States. By the way, we are the post-colonial. Okay? We, we are not the colonies anymore. We, we get that. But this guy, a professor at Princeton, writes this anti-Semitic garbage incorrect historically and i'm going to point to one legal argument here that is such a fallacy and that they put this in u.n reports by the way a u.n report now that's really hard to find we found it but really hard to find he call he says this the report finds that the strategic fragmentation of the palestinian people is the principal method by which israel imposes an apartheid regime when the israelis pulled out at the request of the palestinian authority out of gaza guess who took over hamas so don't give me this fragmentation of people that's why there's no two-state solution capability. You understand that? If these countries sign on to this, including, by the way, the Palestinian Authority, they're listed here. Do you want to sit down, if you're Benjamin Netanyahu or Donald Trump, do you want to sit down with uh, Abu Masin? Do you want to sit down with uh, with uh, Mahmoud Abbas? Abu Masin's his war name when he was a Palestinian terrorist. You want to sit down with him and say, uh, let, let's see if we can get a two-state solution, which, by the way, Bibi's willing to do. He's got a lot more willing than I do at this point because this is the nonsense that's going on at the U.N. You know, even that, uh, we have one of our, our our special representatives on the peace process from the Trump administration was meeting with Mahmoud Abbas from the Palestinian Authority just this week 
Uh, a day before that meeting, this broke, I, think, I believe it was in Free Beacon. A day before that meeting, Mahmoud Abbas was meeting, uh, celebrating the opening of a new community center named after the terrorists that carried out that coastal bombing yep. in Israel that led to, I believe, the death of over 38 30 Israelis yeah. who yep. were killed, yep. including children. And the center, and these are supposed to be the moderates in the Palestinian yeah. side of things, the Palestinian Authority, the center bears the name of that terrorist. And then that's the really only person we can even deal with directly within the Palestinian And they're naming governance. things after terrorists. Yes, it's still to this day. So let, let's go ahead and take a phone call, Logan. We'll get some comments, too. Let's grab a call. Yeah, let's go to uh, let's go to Dennis in Alabama. Hi, Dennis. Go ahead. Hello, gentlemen. I'm going to make this as quick as possible. Over the last eight years, we haven't defended Israel as we should have. That's Obama's fault. We need to stop being defensive, be offensive in this. Anybody who supports this mess, cut their funding. Done. Over. And give that money to support the Israelis. And on top of that, the U.N. is failing. It, I, and Absolutely. I fully agree with what you. I fully agree with what you said about the Security Council. I have thought in the past we should just dump it, but we can't. You can't. Leave the you, you, you can't because the, yeah, and you can't dump it because of what Jordan said. And that is, it's a it's a veto right that's important. But I, I want to say something really clearly here. You know, I, I've represented the state of Israel. You know that I've represented Palestinian Christians. I don't know if you know that. So I have done both sides of this, and trust me, Palestinian Christians don't want to live under Hamas control. Okay, they do not. I want to take you to the United Nations where we stood with Israel. Take a look. I'm before you today, and it's a humbling experience for me. My grandfather, Shmulek Sekulow, traveled from Russia in 1914 aboard a boat that took him past the Statue of Liberty. He was a fruit peddler in Brooklyn, New York. His grandson, me, I get to argue cases at the Supreme Court of the United States in international tribunals, and now appear before you. We said in our letter, Israel's under constant deadly terrorist attacks. Jewish students, professors, and Christians who support, and people of other faiths who support Israel face vicious discrimination. We are fighting back, and we're fighting back with 110, 120,000 other people. Let me close with this. You can't see these. I don't think you can see my cufflinks. Two things, three things I'm wearing of significance for me today. This was my watch my grandmother gave me for my bar mitzvah in 1969. This is the ring Shmulek Sekulow got when he became a U.S. citizen. These cufflinks have in them shells, mortar, and rocket pieces fired from Gaza, because when Operation Cast Lead took place and we knew there was going to be actions at the ICC, I went with my son, who's also one of our senior lawyers, and a number of other of our team, to the front line. That rocket landed about 75 feet from my son. Fortunately, he was not harmed. But we took pieces of that. Those rocket mortar are with me today as a constant reminder we're in a struggle for life and death. It is a struggle. We will win. We have no option. Thank you very much. Thank you. Well, there you have it. That was our last appearance at the UN. Logan, let's go ahead and take some calls. Let's go to Ghazi, who's calling in California online, too. From California. Ghazi, welcome to the broadcast. You're on the air. Hi, good morning. How good are morning. you? Thank good. you for having me with sure. you. Okay, I'm, I'm a Palestinian who moved to the state 12 years ago. Yes, sir. And I was a peace activist, and I paid the price to lose two of my brothers, lose my, my mother. She was in, inside Israeli jail, you know, and I came here to seek an asylum and better life and better future. And I live under occupation for most of my life, 42 years. Where did, you know? where did, where did Ghazi, where did you live in Israel? I live in Hebron area. Okay, and, and you, you consider yeah. that occupied territory? Yes, it's unoccupied territory. What do you consider it? Uh, well, I, I consider you part of Israel is what I consider. But and and while you were there, were you uh, you said you were discriminated against? Yes, I was discriminated by both sides. You know, by both. But, but, I, but when you say by both sides, I'm just asking because I've represented Palestinians before. You were discriminated by you're saying Israelis, but also Palestinians. Yes, 
I got a life threat because for what I'm doing, I, I do recognize the state of Israel. And okay. I do recognize the right of the Jewish people to have their own state, their okay. own country, and to live in peace and dignity yep. and no war, you know, among, among uh, the Arab right. countries, you know. But I think it's the time to stop calling the Palestinian as a terrorist. It's the well, time I'm not also. calling all Palestinians terrorists, and I would never do that. I don't call all Muslims terrorists. I don't call all Arabs terrorists. I think that's not fair. I agree with you on that. What do you think of the the prime minister, Mahmoud Abbas, Abu Masin? What do you think of him? But he's not the right person. They are negotiating with, with the wrong guy. Who should okay, they be negotiating with? The Israeli. They're negotiating with the wrong guy. Who should he? Okay, Ghazi, who should the Israelis negotiate with in your view? You have like Marwan Barghouti, you know, but uh, he, Dr. Barghouti. But Dr. Barghouti uh, doesn't have any legal standing within the Palestinian Authority. And that is to me, Ghazi, what the problem is. Yeah. You're negotiating with someone who, and I appreciate you calling in, by the way, uh, but you, you're negotiating with someone, and you're saying negotiate with this guy. But he doesn't have the governmental control. That's the problem with all of yeah, this. I mean, if, if Ghazi's view was the majority view of most Palestinians, it wasn't because he was mistreated by Palestinians. Right. But if it was the majority view that, yeah, they may not love Israel, they may not love uh, some of the uh, ways that they move in what they consider their territories, but they get that Israel has a right to exist, they could live peacefully, yeah. uh, th then everything would work out. You would have a two-state solution. You could probably even pull one off with Gaza being treated separately for right now. It's going to be tough. But the problem is... He is in the small minority. He's the Zudi Jasser of Palestinians. Zudi Jasser, yep. who, who speaks for moderate Muslims in America. The Gaza who speaks for the most yep. moderate, peaceful and uh, in Palestinians. And he had to flee. Well, that's going to do it for the broadcast today. I want to ask you to do two things. Pray for us as I go back to the UN. Pray for our legal teams. Pray for Israel. Stand with Israel. I will bless those that bless thee. Curse those that curse thee. We've got a petition. up. I'd really like to see it at over 200,000 signatures. Go to aclj.org, that's aclj.org, or call us at 1-877-989-2255, aclj.org, or 1-877-989-2255. Add your name today. Again, aclj.org, or 1-877-989-2255. We'll see you next week. Israel is under constant deadly terrorist knife and rocket attacks. Jewish students, professors, and Christians who support Israel face vicious discrimination at U.S. universities, all in an attempt to delegitimize the state of Israel. Israel is our ally. The Jewish people are friends. It's our duty to defend them. That's why the ACLJ is launching a massive new multinational legal campaign in defense of Israel, in the U.S., at the U.N., and with world leaders. But we need these global leaders to hear from you now. Add your name to our new petition, a petition to defend Israel from anti-Israel attacks across the globe. Call now, 1-877-989-2255. That's 1-877-989-2255. That's 1-877-989-2255. Or you can add your name online, aclj.org.